Here we are. In another episode of the Simple, Simple Success, Success Podcast. Podcast. Where we give you the absolute best financial coaching. This is Financial Life Coaching from a Happiness Perspective. And we're starting with a short and admittedly silly foray into deep learning AI. That's a pretty big level of risk. How are we going to do that? Easy. Simple even. Good. Simple is appropriate. Radio. So the following bit is generated from a well-known AI website. It's really bad, but AI is in its infancy after all. It'll get better. AI wrote this? Well, not what you've heard so far. Just this next crazy part. Oh, okay. When do we start? Now, including this next line. It's okay. I'm ready. First thing, you love me. I do, but I do? Love means anything that is broken. You've got love. Please, Robert. I have to go. My risk profile is weakening. No, I have to wait. Wait, where is this going? It's AI in its very infancy. Just play along. Someday we'll be nostalgic for this stuff. And that is very important. I'll let you do it. Thanks, Alex. Clever. Much cleverer in France than in England. I stand corrected, I think. Yes, John. English and French indeed. But there's a brilliant way of doing it here. Indeed, it is just stunning. I'll agree. We must be spectacular after all. There's a moon. It must be late. Tolerance for risk. Now. It's fantastic. Because it's an epic. It is epic? What epicness is it? Okay, that's enough. Let's rewind this and start all over. Good, because that was really weird. It'll get better before you know it. As I said, we'll be nostalgic for this in a few decades. And in the next episode. Maybe, yeah, but for now... Here we are. In another episode... At the Simple Success Podcast. And... This is Financial Life Coaching. From a happiness perspective. So, you simply look at it differently. Like those characters who wrote our intro today. Right, DT. First, let's start by defining risk level, so we can be on the same page. Good idea, John, but... But what, DT? But please make sure you know their goals first. But I'd rather say, or ask Daniel to say... Risk tolerance is based on your personal circumstances. It is also how you would feel if your investment lost money. But if you don't know their goals... Yet, so... Then you'll say something vague and all-inclusive like this. The goal of financial life coaching from a happiness perspective is to help you identify and achieve your financial goals in a way that makes you happy. This may include helping you to create a budget, save money, invest money, or pay off debt. It may also involve helping you to find a job that you love, start your own business, or make a career change. Whatever your financial goals may be, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective can help you to achieve them in a way that brings you joy. Sorry, DD. At least I'm not asking boring financial planner questions like, why do some companies have different levels of risk tolerance? I'd much rather answer questions from real people like you and our listeners. That's cool. So I'll ask a pretty common question. Which is, which is, shouldn't risk tolerance increase with age? In a kind of upward trend? According to some people, yes. A classic example includes the traditional 60-40 allocation between stocks and bonds. Examples like these often show how an aggressive portfolio would make a bunch, a moderate portfolio would make a fair amount, and a conservative portfolio would not make much at all. At least by comparison. Right, but... Doing a risk tolerance for someone is hard, yes? Not at all. Huh? Those things are a hundred pages or more. I see I have a bit more educating to do here. How so? Because I can name that tune in only two questions. So it's fast then? Yes, it is. Just not as fast as... Break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us. Please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month doing level of support, a $4.99 knowing level or a basic intro level of just 99 cents per month. Great place to start, whichever you choose. Thank you so much for helping us do this for you. And to leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. 
You can also send us an audio file attached to an email if you use just more than your phone for stuff. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there and it's all easy. Name it. Huh? The tune. Huh? Some more? You said a minute ago that you could name that tune. Oh, do you mean with two questions? That's your claim, and it's time to name. The tune? Yes, my liege. What did you mean by that? Well, Name That Tune was a TV game show a while back where the winners tried to figure stuff out faster. And it's somehow relevant to this now? Just simpling it, I don't need a hundred pages of analysis any more than I need the proverbial old hole in the head. And neither do you. So you've got it down to two questions? That I do, DT. And I'm going to ask the first one. All right, my liege. What's the name of that tune? You mean, what's the first question, right? Yes, that is what I meant, is what I meant by what I said. Gotcha, I think. Okay, the first question is, ¿Qué años tienes? How old am I? See in English. We've covered this before. I'm almost two years old now. Ah, tienes dos años. See, sí, Juan, I know that's a bit earlier than most people who want financial advice. Not at all, DT. You're just a child actor, after all. The best way to analyze data is a short, simple analysis, no matter your age. Then why ask it? Excellent question, DT. It starts with how long you expect to live. But you didn't say that. Even though I didn't say it. Okay, I'll live until 100. Huh? How do you know that? I don't know for sure, but remember, I have a fairly big appetite for risk. So why pick it then? Because we have to analyze it in order to have an analysis. Brilliant. But what's distracting you now? It's a PowerPoint. I just saw an evil PowerPoint eat a bunch of miniature schnauzers. In a greasy diner? Yeah. But not like a Waffle House or anything, though. You can say that again. Yeah. But not like a Waffle House or anything, though. That's a figure of speech, D.D. Huh, better than an oxymoron, like disposable income. So you're saying most people don't go for being older? Right. Most people pick way below that, like 80-something. And that is bad. Why? Imagination. Huh? Again? And even more again? They don't think imaginally, and they don't think it all the way through. How's that? Well, if they say 80-something and they live that long, then maybe they run out of money while they're healthy and fine. But people wouldn't let that kind of thing happen, would they? Let's put it this way. If you put $1,000 into the market and the value dropped by 20% in one month, what would you do? That is a very standard risk tolerance question, by the way. Oh, uh, that would be huge losses. I would panic. That would be my first reaction. I would buy more. See? Different people have different responses. When faced with such an eventuality, some will do nothing. Others will scream their heads off. When you're trying to determine your risk tolerance, ask yourself how comfortable you will feel maintaining your positions when, for instance, the value drops by 20% in one month. Bummer! That's one way of putting it. So, I say 100 because if something happens in their 80s and they have a bunch left over, then they have to give it to their kids or favorite charity. Risk tolerance reads human behavior. It doesn't mean just throwing all caution to the wind. It all depends on how you make your work. Well, that's another apt analogy, DT. But an investor can lean into being aggressive or conservative or somewhere in between, right? Yes, and I get it. There are three types of risk profiles, conservative, moderate, and aggressive. An aggressive investor or one with a high risk tolerance is willing to risk losing money to get potentially better results. At the opposite end of the spectrum, a conservative investor, or one with low risk tolerance, favors investments that maintain their original money. That does happen, but we're focusing on how to get the answer so you can get started right now. That's a better picture. So what's the second question? Oh, that's easy too, but we should tease it. What does that mean? Oh, it's an old trick. We make it clear we're about to finish up something interesting, but then we get someone to force us all to wait. Someone? Anyone? Yep, only in this case, it's... Break number two. We know a lot about you already, because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. 
it involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing? I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno, Sybil. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. Can I simple that? You can. Just simple it. With an investing tie-in? Absolutely. That's the whole point, kind sir. Good. Let's start with that elusive second question thing before we end. Sure. What question would you like to ask? Rate of return? Risk of loss? No, it's the question you always ask. Oh, right, of course. On with it, sir kind and smart investor. Okay, here goes. How much do you spend every month? On what? Oh, um, let's say everything. That's too hard. I can't do that. Why not? Well, there's food, rent, utilities, transportation, etc. All of which are necessary expenses, but simple. Well, I can't afford all of that. Au contraire, my dirty tea. You can afford everything you really want. I can? Yes. Now, can we get back to my question about how much you spend every month? Ten large. Ten what? Ten large. Ten thousand dollars a month. Which is... How much every year? 10000 a month is 120000 a year. Right, Alexa, as always. And you're two years old, you said? In your imagination, yes. Okay, one more bit of math. Oh, I hate math. Me too, believe it or not. But I can handle this simple stuff, though. Just civil it. Right. 100 minus your age of two is 98. Clever you aren't, yet. And 98 times $120,000 is... Alexa? 98 times 120000 is 11760000 So, with your numbers being so very young, when you have $11,760,000, you too can retire. It's much less for most people. It's going to be much less for our listeners. And then what do I worry about? Well, hopefully nothing, my friend. And anyway, life is too short to worry about things we cannot control. But what if something happens to me while I'm retired? Well, then you can simply go back to work and make more money. Oh, thanks. You're making this look so simple and doable. Let me speak for myself. I have been put off from having a solid investment plan because I was fearful of the outcomes of a risk. And neither will you savor triumphs or know the joys of lifting a trophy after your risk tolerance has paid off. That's the difference between folks who are risk accepting and those who are risk averse. If I hear you correctly, what you're saying is that risks are part of the game and I should accept that fact. Or else or I'll be forever confined to the sidelines and not play the game. And another thing I'm getting is that what works for the Joneses may not work for me, even if we have the same income. You can say that again, but please don't this time. This is why it's important to not just copy-paste another person's investment portfolio as they may be more or less comfortable with riding out heavy losses compared to you. We all have a different risk tolerance. So, handling riskier investments is not rocket science. Like with almost all things, once you win the battle in your mind, the rest of the battle will not be too hard. If we practice, write, and persist, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escucho. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Fact Checker, Abraham Lincoln, French Consultant, Virginia Mitchell, Media Expert, Favor, Abbasi E.K., Psychologist, William James, 
Rabbit Hole Advisor, Dr. Mark Perrot, Sound Designer, Goodly Amo, Marconi, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy, Videographer, Alfred Hitchcock, Audio Props, Les Paul, Inspiration, Napoleon Hill and Earl Nightingale. We also have websites, and you can subscribe to both podcasts and get ebooks and other great stuff. You can send us a video, audio, or text message, but of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to actually get links and stuff. And those clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from the online tone generator linked in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on Podmatch and Listen Notes, where we consider guests and guesting on other pods. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Bent Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams. The sound effects credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Canoe CG, Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play Moss Stories, ERH, and Just Good Ink. Yes, that's his name. All on freesound.org. Paul.